as I said earlier in another clip, I really like faceting. And I play around with it a lot, and so should you. One of the things I've discovered how to do is produce these really wide facets. But on a round pot, that's kind of difficult. So I square it up first. I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, like all my faceting, I start with a cylinder and I facet a straight wall. So let's bring this up. The wall is at least half an inch thick. The inside of this pot is rounded. This is a cup form. So I'm being very conscious of how far apart my fingertips are as they come up the wall. Make sure I keep this alcove down below. I'm going to use a rib now and remove the finger lines from inside, all those grooves. I want to take them away because they'll transfer into the faceting as I push this form outward. I'm going to use a rib and smooth the outside wall, clean the wheel head, and remove the water from the inside of the cup. Now it's really important that the outside of this wall, this surface, this flat surface, is dry. It's going to be soft, but I want it dry. And the reason for that is the next step which is squaring it. Now when I square a pot that's wet on the wheel, I use masonite again. Fuzzy side touches the tacky surface and won't stick to it. But when I square, I'm going to actually create the corners. I'm not going to push the wall in, but I'm going to create the corners. And I do that by configuring these things in a corner and press them up against the pot and squeeze it. There's the first corner, and then I work around the pot like a clock. 12, 6, 3, and 9. Okay, there's my squared pot. Now, if I really push hard with the masonite, I can get rid of this slightly flattened throne area. But I also work with that. I'm going to redefine this groove down here. I'm going to use my cheese cutter and pull it all the way from the base to the rim. Don't forget to keep your finger inside here at the rim. Pull these off carefully. Get rid of them. I try and work pretty neatly when I'm at the wheel if I can. You know, the way you work is reflected in the work you make. You work sloppy, you'll be, end up making sloppy pots. Now this little corner I'm going to get rid of and I'm going to use this wiggle wire cheese cutter and just pull it straight up and facet those corners. Now, I work in a sense of, with a sense of rhythm. I'm not being too tedious over each little thing I do. That takes the life out of the pot. So let's get it moving. And now I'm going to deal with the rim and then push this out into a rounded form again. First thing I'm going to do is wet the inside with a little bit of water. Dampen my fingertips too. And I'm forming an a angle between my finger and my thumb and I'm dropping that angle down on the rim to create a bevel. I actually use a rib to make it really smooth because this is what's going to touch the mouth when you're using the cup. I support at the bottom so I don't push downward. I'm only pushing outward. And again, speed the wheel up and watch the profile of the cup. Now I've left the base half an inch thick because I want to trim a foot in this and eventually I'll put a handle on it too. 
I'm going to use the curved edge of this rib and smooth the inside rim. Clean the water from the inside and smooth the rim. A good rim for a drinking vessel has a slight inward bevel on it. That fits the corner of the mouth. Undercut, down below at the foot, and wire it off. I don't have to change and correct every little burr that's on this pot right now. If I want to soften these, I'll do it when they're leather hard or even bone dry. That's how I facet square pots.